Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Operator. Hello, operator. Would you please give me Eastbrook 264, ring 3? Eastbrook, New York? Uh, no, Eastbrook, Connecticut. It's this side of Bridgeport. Thank you. One moment, please. You are welcome, please. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Your number, please. Oh, um, well, I said Eastbrook 264, ring 3, Eastbrook, Connecticut. The number from where you are calling, please. Oh, wait a minute. I can't see it, operator. You never can see it in the phone booth. Your number, please. Oh, just a minute. Lights are out in this stupid old phone booth. I can't make... Wait a minute, I... I, I think it's Eldorado 6, 7, There one. is no such exchange as Eldorado 6. Well, if you can see the number so well, operator, why do you ask me? Your number, please. It's uh, Eldorado 57140. Or is it? Thank you. That number is correct. Mm-hmm. There's no place like home. That will be 45 cents Florida. for the first three minutes. Honestly, 45 cents for three minutes is an outrage. One minute, operator. I'm just getting the coins. Quarter, dime, nickel, nickel, nickel. Nickel. Here you are, operator. Ouch! My ears. One moment, please. I am ringing your number. My ears are ringing, too. I'm practically deaf. Hello? Oh, Mama, thank goodness it's you. Why? What's the matter, Claudia? Nothing, except this is costing me 45 cents, so I'd have hated it not being you. How's the baby? Fine. Just the way he was last time you called. And it's costing you 45 cents. He's no reason for I it. I called you to tell you we're coming home. I know you're coming home. You've told me twice today already you're coming home. But we're coming home sooner than we thought we were, Mama. Let's see, it's almost uh, 5 o'clock now. We'll be home by about... Where are you? I'm in a phone booth in the Slater Hotel. I'm starting to smell like a cigar from the man before. It shouldn't be allowed, Mama. What are you doing in a hotel? I'm going to meet David here under the clock in a few minutes. At 5 o'clock, sharp. Oh. And, and then we're coming home, Mama, so instead of being home at 7 o'clock, we'll be home at 6 o'clock, or a little after. Don't hurry driving. I'd rather keep dinner waiting a little longer. Oh, David will drive, so it's all right if he hurries. He thinks it's all right for him to be reckless. It's just me who can't be. David knows what he's doing. Honestly, just because he happens to be a man. Anyway, we'll be home at 6 o'clock. I just can't wait. I don't know what your hurry is, but goodbye. Hey, Mama, don't hang up. I paid for three minutes of this telephone time. Um, what's been happening while we're away today? Nothing's happened. How's the baby? First, you tell me what Dr. Rowland said about you. He said I was perfect. Oh, don't get conceited. And he said he hoped I'd come back to him with my next baby. Dr. Rowland is a very patient man. I am the patient, not him. <laughs> Laugh, Mama. That's supposed to be a joke. I think I'll hang up on that one. No, don't. Hey, listen, you haven't told me how the baby is. Did he take his orange juice? He took his orange juice, and he's fine. Does he miss me? How's the house getting along without us? Struggling. We'll manage for another hour. What'd you do all day? Most of the time I was answering the phone. You insisted on keeping ringing. Don't you think I have anything better to do? Mm, yes. Yeah. Anyway, Mama, this is positively the last time I will call you. Next time you'll hear from me, it'll be on the doorsteps of our house. The pleasure will be all mine. Tell the baby not to fret. We'll be home in a little while. I'll tell him. See you, Mama. Your three minutes are up. If you wish to continue... Oh, you fooled to... you, operator. We're all finished. Goodbye, Mama. Phew, I melted. Rock a bye, baby, on the treetop. Well, it's just five o'clock, and fancy who's on time. And fancy who's here. Mm, fancy, fancy. <laughs> I'm not only here, I was here two minutes ago. Now tell me, where were you? I was not only here two minutes ago, I was here four minutes ago. Oh. And I can prove it, too. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Mama on the telephone. To Mama? I again? told her we're coming right home again. We're earlier than we thought we'd be. 
When we decided earlier we'd be later. Oh. Oh. I, I suppose she was delighted, hmm? Delighted, so is the baby. He sends you his regards, by the way. Oh, fine. Uh, what was he doing? Learning his multiplication tables. What did you think he was doing? Helping Fritz water the flowers. <laughs> Listen, we can't stand around this lobby all evening making small talk. Baby talk. And why not? It's, it's a free lobby. Because. Mom expects us home in an hour thereabouts. If we stand around this lobby making small talk all evening, we'll be late. Yeah. That, uh, that sounds very logical. Oh, so, come on, come on. Where'd you park the car? The car? Yeah. Around the corner. Did you find his face on the street? No, no, I, uh, I parked it on the top of an electric sign on the drugstore. That's a very nice place. Mm -hmm. Say, uh, you really want to go right home? You bet I do. If we get home before 7 o'clock, the baby will still be awake. Mm. Is that child all you think about? Practically, except when I'm thinking about you. Oh, it's nice to know I'm not completely forgotten. David, you don't think I think about the baby too much, do you? <laughs> Of course not, darling. I don't want to get queer about it, you know, like like some mothers do. Not a chance. I'd break your neck before that. See that you do. David, we're still standing in this lobby. People are going to think we have no home, no place to go. Well, let them think what they will. I find this lobby very comfortable. Well, you do look stunning under a potted palm, I must say. Potted palm? Wait till I put on my grass skirt and I'll do a hula <laughs> for you. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm fine, Hawaii. How are you? <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Say, what's Mama having for dinner? A potted palm? Uh, no, but potted, potted roast. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's something I don't like. If it is, it'll be the first time you like everything, even me. <laughs> oh, I don't like snails. I know, darling. But since we've been eating snails every day for a week, you won't have to worry about that tonight. Good, good. The menu changes Tuesdays, you know. I don't like kale, either. David, I promise you, if we're having snails and kales for dinner, you and I will go out. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we uh, go out now, just in case? What? You heard me. I thought I heard you suggest that we go out to dinner now. Mm -hmm. Right here in New York. But dinner is waiting for us in Eastport. What's that got to do with it? Well, I suppose nothing. Are we slaves to a kitchen stove? We are not. All right, then. How about it? How about staying in New York for dinner? Just the two of us. I'll take you to the best restaurant in town. Oh, it sounds wonderful. But Mama's expecting... We'll call her up. Well, I, I, I've called her up three times already. Then it won't hurt to call her again. And the baby's expecting us, too. The baby and Mama can have each other, and the same goes for us. It does sound wonderful, eating in the best restaurant in New York with you... Mm, my mouth's water. Then it's all settled. How long have you been thinking of this, Mr. Norton? It just came to me as we were standing here. I saw us in my mind's eye. You, a beautiful young girl. Thank you, sir. Standing here in a hotel lobby, and then I, a handsome young man. You're welcome, sir. Coming up to you, meeting you, falling in love with you. It was only proper that I should invite you to dinner with me. You make it sound very exciting. It is very exciting. Then dinner it is. And I'll tell you what else. We'll we'll spend the whole evening in New York. You're really out of your mind. And if we spend the whole evening in New York, we might as well spend the whole night. David, you know what you're saying? I certainly do. We're going to celebrate. Celebrate what? You being you, I being I, and us being us. That is something to celebrate, isn't it? We can go to a movie after dinner. Oh, we can go to movies in Eastbrook. Oh, but it's so different in New York. It's more sort of an occasion. We shall go to the theater after dinner. David! Mm -hmm. Listen, do you think we ought to spend all that money? I certainly do. Well, I, I, I don't like to sound like a wet blanket. Well, if you don't want to sound like a wet blanket, don't say another word. Well, if you think it's all right... Money's only worth the things you can buy with it. And if I can buy my favorite wife an evening that she'll never forget, well, it's worth it. I don't forget any of our evenings, David. But, all right, New York it is. We can stay right here in this hotel. I know the manager, and he'll give us a suite. Anything you say, you're the boss. Now, don't ever forget it. Now, here, 45 cents. Go call up Mama. Come with me. Don't leave me. Well, you can't even call up Mama alone. Not even that. 
Oh, David, I hope she's not going to be disappointed. Mm, well, just break the news to her gently. I kept the wires hot all day, telling her what time we'd be home until she told me I was a spendthrift. No, I really think I am. <laughs> you are. Uh, there's a there's a phone booth. All right. Operator. Eastbrook 264, ring 3, Eastbrook, Connecticut. My number is Eldorado 57140, and here's the 45 cents. Madam, didn't you get that party before? I did, but I'm calling again. Oh, just one moment, please. Sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. La, 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 la. Hello? Hello, Mama, this is me again. Who is me? Don't you remember your child? What is it this time, child? I'm not coming home. You're not, eh? I've decided to spend the night in town. You've decided? We've decided. I mean, David and I have decided. Mama, listen, you don't mind, do you? After all, you know, home is where the heart is, and David's here, so here we are. You really didn't even have to call me up. What? I've just been waiting for this telephone to ring again. What What for? For you to tell me that you and David have decided to spend the night in town. I didn't any more expect you than in the, the man in the moon. You didn't, Mama. You're so psychic. <laughs> well, in case you're interested, my dear, we haven't even bothered to get any dinner ready for you. You haven't? No. Mama, do you mean to say that you knew it all the time? Why didn't you tell me then? It's more fun to find it out for yourself. Goodbye. Have a good time. Oh, Mama. I think our son's awfully lucky to have a grandmama like you. You 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 tell him that for me, will you? Tell him yourself tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, David. Wherever there are young people, there's sure to be Coca Cola. It belongs where light-hearted fun and sociability flourish. In fact, it seems to promote such good times. That's why it's a good idea to keep a case of Coke in the house if there are youngsters in the family. For that matter, you want plenty of Coke on hand in any case for your own pleasure and for ready hospitality. Why not ask your grocer or service station attendant to put a case in the car today? Hello? Hello? Yes, Mrs. Brown. What can I do for you? Have you seen Claudia and David? Why, yes. Would you give Claudia a message for me? Why, of course. Tell her not to hurry back tomorrow. I'll tell her to spend all day in town. After all, love does come only once, doesn't it? Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.